Hello, praise God, praise God. Welcome everybody. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I am glad to be back. Praise God, praise God. Today is day 10. I know it's been rough. I know it's been rough. Praise God, praise God. But God is good. Glory be to God. God is good. I don't care. You. I want you to always remember this. The good and the bad work together for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You understand what I'm saying? So it really doesn't matter what the enemy thinks to do. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I got these two. I got, I'm working for like almost three devices. So that's why y'all see the glare, but I don't like that glare. Hold on a minute. Hold on. I'm about to move this. Oh, it's still glaring. Oh, well, okay. It is what it is. So what we're talking about is the restoration of God. The restoration, the pain of restoration. And I'm going to get straight into it. Um, let me go ahead and praise God, praise God, you guys. But I, I do want to encourage you about something. Whenever you have this type of fast, any type of fast, I'm telling you right now, you have to understand, it's not just about fasting. Most people think, oh, I'm on a fast and, you know, okay, great, that's good. But have you thought about the warfare? <laughs> have you thought about, and Prophetess Juanita Bynum told me this in 2013 when she anointed me twice. She said, Deanna, always remember something. She said, the enemy always tries to attack your body, especially when you're going on a fast or you have an assignment. I want y'all to hear me. I'm telling you, because remember what I said the first lesson. I said that your most valuable asset is your body. Come on, somebody was talking about demons, how they try to possess your body. Well, that's the same thing the enemy tries to do. When he sees that you are leading any kind of fast or better yet on assignment or better yet just anointed and appointed. Honey, he is coming after you, but you got to stand strong. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to fight through that thing because I'm going to be honest with you. I have had warfare since Friday, since I did the last one Friday. You guys didn't notice that? Yeah, you, I, I guess you, I hope you didn't think I was just playing hooky. I, I don't do that. Praise. God, hallelujah. When I am committed to whatever God tells me, I am committed. But I also use wisdom and discernment. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, you have to stay the course. You have to stay the course because the enemy, he doesn't fight for just anything. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. If he's fighting you, that's because he knows what's inside of you. He knows what God is about to do. He knows that God is going to do something. And hold on, I need you to know something. When God blesses you, it's not just for you. So he's trying to stop a whole nation. Oh, come on, somebody. He's trying to stop you from delivering your family, your friends, even your enemies. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me continue. So I'm going to start with Joel, second chapter, 25 to 26. And it says, then I will make up for the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. I broke it down because I want people to really, I want to, I want simplicity. I want you to understand everything that I'm trying to say. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the growing locusts, my great army which I sent among you, you will have plenty to eat and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. Then my people will never be put to shame. So everything that God has allowed, because understand something, nothing just happens. I, I need you to make some notes. You know, when we come on here, especially when we're fasting or whatever the case may be, which... I told you God had told me to go back to my lifestyle. So for me, this is just, um, we're going to be just switching, meaning that I'm going to be fasting until whenever, right? After the fast, I'm going to be fasting Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, those that want to join me. And then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, probably eat, you know, something light. But I got to go back to, and I'm going to reiterate what I said, because some of you need to understand that. The greater the calling, the greater the service. The greater the calling the greater you have to protect your anointing. And I remember when I was in California, because that was my training ground for 15 years. If you don't fast, you won't last. And and when, you know, Dr. Godot said that and a couple of other people, Frederick K. Price, if you, if you want to know my lineage, because a lot of people don't know, they I think they just think I just popped up on here. No, I was in a real church for all my life, actually. But where I really got my training ground was in California, in L.A. under Bishop McLennan and also Dr. Godot. And Dr. Godot was under Frederick K. Price. So that's my lineage. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so then with God doing the rest of the work, making me into whom he created me to be, that's who you see today. So I'm saying all that to say, God told me, said, you have to understand that we have a, a enemy Come on, somebody. And that enemy don't want you to get to your destiny. He don't want you to get to your calling. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So he will try to stop you in any shape, form, or fashion. And he will use anything or anyone by any means necessary. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So 
I want to talk to you about the pain of restoration. What is the pain of restoration? I got some things that I wrote down here, and I want to talk to you about it. Okay, so just listen for a moment, please. Remember, this ain't no hooping and hollering. I'm teaching. I, I, I might holler. Y'all know I like to holler sometimes. All right, so hold on. Whatever the enemy has tried to take away from you, God wants to restore it. I'm going to have to move this thing. I got to get it closer so I can really. Okay. All right. God wants to make it better than before. That's the kind of father he is. Every day we have choices put before us. We can be tempted to get hurt, wounded, or depressed. We can complain or remain the same awful condition. Or we can praise God and be raised up. One of the first things the enemy will try to steal from you is your joy. That's why I wrote that today. Let me tell you something. You have to understand. You have an enemy that's trying to steal your joy. Because if he steal your joy, he steal your confidence. If he steal your confidence, he steal your faith. If he steal your faith, he steal your anointing. All things are connected together, just as if other spirits. You remember when I said that all demons, they're connected together, greed, selfishness, um, anger, rage, all that. Well, it's the same thing, the fruits of the spirit, they're all connected together. So if he can steal one, he's really after all of them. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's why you have to guard your mind. Come on, somebody, you have to renew your mind. You have to pray over yourself every day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, keep me, God. Keep me, God. I need you. This is not a game. Because truth be told, you know we're going to get attacked? Not when you're around people. Not when you're on Facebook. When you're by yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to take a journey. Have you ever noticed that when you are by yourself in a room, come on, somebody, which is the most dangerous thing, you need to understand what I'm getting ready to say, that is two things are going to happen. Either God will penetrate you or the devil will try to frustrate you. I'm going to say this again. Either the spirit of God will penetrate you or the enemy will try to frustrate you. And what I'm saying is whoever you listen to, you listen to God, God will tell you, hang in there. I got you. No, it's not in your timing. I know it's been hard, but guess what? You're not going to die. Not yet because I still got some stuff for you. Come on, somebody. But I'm trying to take you somewhere. Don't worry. I ain't going to let them kill you. Oh, come on, somebody. I know it's hard, but I'm building character. I'm building integrity. I'm, I'm building you up so you can stand where I have you to go, where I destined you to go. Now, this is the other hand. The enemy will try to frustrate you. Well, you know, you, you know this. You, well, you know that. Uh, you, I don't want to speak anything. But he'll just say so many things that you are depressed, oppressed, suppressed, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this thing is real. It's called the pain of restoration. Can you handle the pain? Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand it? Because let me tell you something. Different level, more devils. That's not just a quote. A quote, uh, um, a quote. That is real. You got to understand what is going on. This thing just got dark, huh? What the heck? Okay, hold on, you guys. Okay, praise God, praise God. I'm telling you, I already know he's going to mess with me because that's what he do. So let me continue. So what God was saying is that you have to understand who you are. This is, just, let me tell y'all something. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 he got me going this way, so I'll have to leave this alone for a minute. You know, that's the one thing about God. Any real teacher knows this, preacher knows this. You can have a thousand things written down. If somebody is on here and they need something, God will, will redirect your whole sermon, your whole whatever you got planned. And that's what he's doing right now. So somebody needs this. Okay, so this is what God told me tonight. He says, okay, so do you remember in the um, Bible, the apostles, the early church, their thing, hold on, I want more light up in here. Their thing was more physical. They was getting behated. They was getting chased. All kind of things were going on. In this second half, ours is more spiritual. Come on, somebody. So now you have a church that's still trying to operate in a worldly system. And that's why the church don't have no power. You're still trying to operate as old as if we're just going to get attacked physical. No, no, no. The second half of this journey, the second half of this dimensional shift it's spiritual. And that's why a lot of people are falling because you keep trying to handle it in the physical and this is spiritual. And you cannot be the, in a physical war. In a spiritual war, you cannot go physical. You have to go spiritual. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. Well, I'm going to tell you how tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Let me tell you how you do that. You have to get in your word. I don't care how tired you are. There are times I'm telling you. And yes, the spirit of sleep will try to come up on you. You have to have a made up mind. I'm talking about the pain of restoration. If the enemy took something, if the enemy stole something, if you feel um, like oh, I'm not making it. A lot of people in the body of Christ right now, they're really unhappy. Oh, come on, somebody in front of people. Yeah, highly blessed and favored and everything. I mean, you, 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 you just spewing it out. But when you're alone by yourself, 
God, why? God, I don't understand. God, you know what I need. Why are you taking so long? All these things are coming up because guess what? You are not standing in a spiritual. And you, have, you have to be spiritual in this hour. Oh, I'm going to have to break this thing down. Listen to me what I'm saying. You're going to have to pray more. You're going to have to fast more. You're going to have to spend time with God more. You're going to have to get in that Bible more. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's too many books out there. Oh, I'm about to say something. And some of you are not going to agree. And I really don't care. I don't read a whole lot of books like I used to. Because guess what? It makes you intelligent, huh? It, it makes you, it redirects your thinking to what the subject is. But now I've gotten more back into the Bible because that is the biblical instructions before leaving earth. That is what, you know what I mean? The Bible is the water of the word. It cleanses you. It, 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 it thrives you. Come on, it heals you. It delivers you. Oh, come on, somebody. It, it brings wisdom. It brings discernment. It brings strength. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because I promise you, in this world, you will have much tribulation. You will have much tests. You will have much trials. Oh, my God. To be honest with you, sometimes your own mind will mess with you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that word, that word, that word, that word will keep you out of calmness. That word will help you. That word will show you. That word will direct you. That word will instruct you come on somebody hallelujah the enemy that came into the church and not just the enemy came into the church i'm gonna tell you what's happening people are more how could i say that more geared toward just having things you guys are working so much to have the bigger house to show everybody that you're blessed to get that husband to get that wife to get this to get that can i tell you something if you just focus on god if you just focus on what god have told you to do and what he showed you to do whatever it god has for you it will be for you but first seek ye the kingdom of god at all his righteousness oh come on somebody matthew 6 33 and people are not doing that people are not doing that because it's a spirit and i'm gonna tell you what the spirit is and it is gonna it's gonna take you by surprise it's called the spirit of attention. That's what it has the church in awe right now. And what is the spirit of attention? I'm going to prove it to you right now. How, how, how come everybody like followers? Everybody want to get followers? Don't play with me. That's the spirit of attention. Look at me. Look at me. The selfie. Look at me. I stopped taking selfies. I don't know if y'all noticed that. Every now and then I'll put an old picture up. But I'm not going to be... Because I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to form pride. I'm going somewhere. Work with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. This is teaching. It ain't preaching. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This is teaching and reaching. The spirit of attention. Now, hold on. The spirit of attention is attached to the spirit of lust. Look at me. Look at me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Even in the church. Why you think everybody wearing tight dresses? Y'all aren't listening to me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Everybody want to be noticed. Everybody want to be seen. Everybody want to be the greatest. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why people are doing things. Oh, I'm going here tonight. The conferences. You have so many conferences. But ain't nobody being delivered. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. It is time for the body of Christ to go back to biblical applications. What am I saying, apostle? Let me tell you what I'm saying. Simplicity. Can you just preach a, a, a sermon that will really somebody need? And hold on. You can only do that. You see how I got up in here? I have so much stuff written down about the pain of restoration. Then God just geared it just now. He said, I, I need you to talk about that. That's because I'm, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit leads you. Oh, God, you want me to teach this thing? I get it. I got to slow down. Okay. When the Holy Spirit is truly leading you, this is what's supposed to happen in the atmosphere. Anytime ministry go forth, the Holy Spirit goes and he's looking at everybody that's on this line right now. Even the ones that, that that's not acknowledging because there's always the, the lookers from and he said, OK, this one need this. This one need this. This one need this. This one need this. So then by the obedient ear of the servant of the Lord, he says, shift. Because I need this one to get this answer. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying. I need this one to get this answer. And so that's what's supposed to happen in the church. And it's not happening. It's not happening. But guess what? That's some of your fault. Because you're sitting up there. Oh, pastor. Pastor preached good. Pastor did good. You know pastor didn't do nothing but just tickle your fancy. Don't play with me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The pain of restoration. It's not just being restored just unto yourself. God is trying to restore the church in this last hour. He's trying to get us back. Back to where we love each other. Back to compassion. Back to tearing the truth. Walking in integrity. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? Are you hear what I'm saying tonight? Hallelujah. Stop lying. Hooking and crooking. The pain of restoration. Most of the time. 
when you really lose something. Ooh, I'm about to go here. These are some good nuggets. I hope you're writing them down. I'll just go back and listen. <sighs> I got it. Oh, God. He always had me tell a story. I'll be doggone. I didn't want to tell this story, but I'm going to be obedient. Something had happened very recently. Okay. And I'm not going to go into the details because that person may be on here or may listen. And I don't need that extra, extra riff raff. But I will say this. Somebody really disappointed me. They said this and I believed it. And it was a big one. It was a big one till I literally cried. Do you know what happened? How I came up with those seasonings? I got so upset. I said, okay, so they're trying to stop me this way and that way. I say, so because that, that felt like a setup, just to be real. I got in that kitchen and I just started... Oh, I'm about to say something. Through failure, through disappointments, brings creativity like never before. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You ought to just think your enemies. Oh, come on, somebody. You ought to just think when they do that, what they do, how they do when they do it. Because that's when God really has your attention. And, and hold on. I ain't saying hate nobody. No, no, no. That's not of God. You forgive them and you just keep on going. But it is in that moment where you listen like you ain't never listened before. And you hear the instructions of the Lord. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was not thinking about any seasonings. But because I was at a state to where I'm going to survive. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm preaching to somebody that's about to give up or give out or give in. You ain't got no choice. You can't afford to lose again. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's when you get before God and you say, God, give me something. Because when God speaks to you, just a touch from God. Can change your whole life. Just a word from God can change your whole life. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody on here. Because God made me change my whole text just now. Just for you. And it actually is about two or three people. You have been going around and around and around in circles. God, I've done this. I've done what you wanted me to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. I'm not sinning. What's up, God? God told me to tell you, your timing is almost there. But don't you dare give up. Because let me tell you something. It is just about when you're about to give up. That that's when. I'm going to tell you another story that Pastor Godot told us one day. Um, there they had an angel. And we do have angels, by the way. And this little boy had been praying. Well, actually, it was a little girl praying for some red shoes. And the little girl was just praying and praying. Faith. We're talking about faith right now. And the angel, like on the 10th day, was flying down to bring the red shoes. And just when the angel was about to open the door and just present her with the red shoes, she said, you know what? I just give up. I I, I don't believe in God. I, I My faith is. And the angels had to stop right in his tracks and bring the shoes back to heaven. Y'all want to hear what I said? I know it sounds like a simple story, but it's really impactful. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Don't you understand that some of you are right there and the enemy Oh, fear. What is fear? False evidence appearing real. It's not even real. Smoke screen, honey. You are right there. And you cannot afford to give up. But you will have to do that self-examination. Some of you are not obedient. You have to be obedient to the T. Come on, somebody. You can't do it halfway. You got to do it all the way. If God say detach from this person, you have to detach. If God say connect, you have to connect. Some of y'all don't want to connect with people because guess what? I don't like them. You don't even know why you don't like them. Some of you people don't want to disconnect from somebody because they got a little something and you're trying to get that little something. But God trying to give you your own something. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the God. You got to be obedient. Let me tell you something. And I'm telling you, God didn't change this whole text tonight. The Pharaoh system. Let me tell you what's happening with this Pharaoh system. That's why it's crumbling. God is calling his people out of the Pharaoh system. I challenge every last one of you. How did God take care of Abraham? We talk about the Abraham covenant, the blessings of Abraham. He took care of Abraham supernaturally. Hallelujah. And I can prove it to you. Oh, all you got to do is read Genesis. Hallelujah. He took care of Abraham supernaturally. All Abraham's job was to do. Was to serve God and worship God. As a matter of fact. He never gave them a job. He gave you a work to do. The enemy gave you a job. Because guess what. The job keeps you in bondage. Oh come on somebody. As a matter of fact. Ooh, I'm going to break this thing down. So many people don't understand scripture. God never gave people a job. He gave them a work to do. That's why. What did the scripture say? If you don't work you don't eat. Oh come on somebody. You don't even know what that work means. That is not a job. That is doing the biblical ministry of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because we all have ministry in us. 
Whether it's teaching, preaching, reaching, whatever you do, you, you might be able to clean up. You might be janitorial. Guess what? While you cleaning up, you praying. Oh, come on, somebody might be driving somebody around. While you driving, you praying. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me up here tonight. So whatever you doing, wherever you at, that is your ministry. Hallelujah. It's not just about a dollar. You see, the world, Pharaoh's system, they made it about a dollar. Because now nobody want to do nothing without a dollar. But he says, do it as, it as if you're doing it unto the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And it really still tie in with the pain of restoration. Because sometimes when God allowed you to lose everything, God is about to give you something that you have never had before. Greater. And can I tell you something? More money, more problems for real. You don't understand what I'm saying. When God bless you, that's when they really come in. I'm talking about since I've had the little, because it ain't finished yet, the success, you'd be surprised the things that have came. To, and, and I mean, even family, I'm looking like the blanks there. But I'm going to tell you, he has been preparing me this whole time. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. It is when you have went through test after test after test after trial after trial. You are not ready. Come on, somebody. But I got to tell you something. It's not going to get easier. Oh, come on, somebody. That test, that trial, them failures, them things that you was going through was just preparing you for your real destiny. The real stuff that's coming. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Hallelujah. So can you handle the restoration. Can you handle people talking about you? Can you handle people lying on you? Can you handle, come on somebody, the spiritual warfare. And, I, and I'm going here. Oh, I don't know why he got me going here. Some of you getting ready to go to the next level. I'm so serious because he got me going here. Let me tell you about the next level. Ooh, because we have a church that's scared of demons. When you get to the next level and you're really annoying, you got that heavy aura. Have you ever had, and you sleeping at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And you'll be shake. Hold on. And it ain't you, honey. And ain't a man in there, honey. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about it. Shakes. And you get up and you don't see nobody. And you, you realize, okay, what's going on, God? Uh, Y'all ain't ready for me. Are you ready for demonic spiritual warfare? That's what I'm really saying. Because some of you are asking for God to promote you. You have to understand you can't have one without the other. You can't have the blessings without understanding that the devil is coming after you and saying, oh, you want to be blessed. Oh, you want to be anointed. Oh, you want to pull other people out. Come on, somebody. Because that's what it's all about. You are blessed to be a blessing, honey. It ain't just for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I like what you said, Carla. We have to be sold out. That's real. That's real. So the pain of restoration. Everything that God is preparing you for is not just for you. It may be. Don't you know that? It's like a domino effect. Somebody's waiting on you. Believe it or not, this time, this night, God ordained this night. When I was a little girl, didn't even know God. Come on, somebody. You, do, are you understanding what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, it's the same thing with you. Right now, some of you are at this stage and you thinking, oh, I'm just going to be this. You don't understand the greatness that's in you, God says. But you have to see what God see. You have to see what God see. And all we can see what God see is if you go where God at. We're talking about worshiping. Going deeper. Because the only reason that some of you don't want to go deeper, you're scared of demons. I'm telling you what God say. You got to understand. You got to go. That's somebody waiting on you. And when you get more anointed, yes, there will be no more tests, more trials. But I promise you one thing. God will bless you. God will keep you. Hallelujah to his name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy, y'all. I'm going to tell you right now. In this season. And I know I, I know why you're telling me to say this God. My heart is really heavy. This is not the season to play with God. This is not the season to play with God. I'm going to say it again. This is not the season to put, be obedient. Because the enemy is setting up people. You, you guys don't see it. And I got to say something. And I know you guys don't like when I go here. Um, I know you don't. But I'm going to go here anyway. Y'all know this was going on in Dominican Republic. People getting killed, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all know this was going on with the food, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all notice that, I mean, it just seemed like it's here, here, there, there. Let me tell you what. And this is a dust of the Lord. It's the enemy. God is allowing the enemy full-fledged attacks, which is actually from the Illuminati. Let's be real. They want, they want to create order out of chaos. 
This is just the beginning. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all think that they don't know who killing them people in Dominican Republic? They just poisoning people? Y'all know the sacrifices, right? Let me tell you something. The revelation is being fulfilled like never before. And we have a church that's not preaching on it, that's not teaching on it, that's not preparing the people of God. I want you to all know, I'm telling you what does said the Lord, it's all out war against the children of God and America. And y'all need to understand what's going on here. And I apologize to you why they not, they not, they can't, they can't, they're 5031C, they can't, they can't. And then they sign that FEMA thing. They'll come on somebody, don't play with me. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, Google, Google what I'm saying. Yes, Famine is coming to America. All kind of things. This is just the beginning. So what God is doing in this last hour is saying, please, please, please come close to me. So I can tell you what's happening. So I can tell you, prepare yourself. Can I can teach you to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's not just about heaven stuff. When I'm talking about the pain and restoration, I'm not talking about, okay, you won't get your car. You won't get a house. You're going to be married. Or, I know I know that's good and everything's fine. And, and God wants you to be happy. But you know what the pain of restoration is? I want to restore your soul so you can restore others. Bam, there it is. That's what it's about. Because at the end of the day, he says that you are not, let me tell you something, we are not of this world. So the world of its own. But if you are truly a child of God, we are not of this world. So you shouldn't be comfortable here anyway. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So what you should be doing is winning souls in this hour. Winning souls like never before. Don't get caught up in the riffraff. What am I saying? Don't get caught up in, oh, I got to have a bigger house, a bigger car. I want everybody to love me and like me. And and if you love me, oh, I'm about to say, PayPal me. Yeah, we need money for ministry. How dare y'all when y'all ministering talking about PayPal me. So you pimping the gospel? You pimping the gospel? I got to say this. There are two great men that I've loved in my lifetime as men of God. And they both end up killing themselves. And I'm going to say their names because I want you to go and Google them. The serious ones. The ones that y'all ain't got to do it. But the serious ones, because you're going to understand what I'm getting ready to say. One of them was Dr. Ed Montgomery. That man was powerful, you guys. (laughs) That man was a powerful man of God. Just go listen to some of his sermons. His wife died. And so, and so the demon started talking to him and he started listening. He ended up killing himself in front of his mother and his son. I have never forgotten about that. That hurt me. That hurt me to my heart. Just go listen to his sermons. You'll see what I'm saying, how anointed he was. How could that have happened? How? I'm going somewhere with this. The second one was actually my one of my mentors, Dr. Joseph Jennings. Um, he come from like a background pretty much like I have. He was an um, ex-gang. I mean, he had been shot at, stopped. I mean, man, this man wasn't supposed to be living. Dr. Joseph Jennings. And what ended up happening with him, my friend, he even took up for me when I was in California. He um, came against a couple of pastors and said, y'all jealous of that young lady because she's powerful. I mean, this man, I met a lot of people in my life. I've never met a man. So one, he was one of the most powerful men I've ever met. I'm going to say it again ever they don't want to say and I hope they don't get offended of me but you know it was a hush hush what happened to him but I just got to be real I can't be playing games we know it's suicide and it hurt because I cried I was like okay God I I, I said God I don't understand this this man was strong and and he loved you what happened God I mean I'm, I'm getting upset with God God said Deanna it can happen to any of, of you. I said, God, what do you mean? You have to stay connected. I don't know if you got depressed. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. But when you meet somebody and you know their character, like you guys know my character, I know I'm strong, right? That's why we get closer to God and we pray and we stay close to God. I'm going somewhere with this. You check everybody and everything that comes in your direction. And if it does not line up with the word of God, you do not entertain it. I don't care if it's a friend, a family member. Yeah, I'm going here today. Because I'm trying to tell you something. This stuff is real. The enemy is after you. You think this is a game? Look at what's happening in the world. 
the pain of restoration. So many people give up. And what I'm saying to you now is don't give up. I don't care what happens. Don't give up. And yes, it may hit you to the core of your spirit. And it has. Oh, come on, somebody. I can attest there have been some times where it hit you to the core of your spirit where you don't even want to live no more. But that's when you have to dig in yourself and find out that this is not about you. Hallelujah to his name. The pain of restoration. What am I saying? God needs us to restore his church. The real ones. Hallelujah. We don't need them fake ones. Oh, turn around five times. You won't get $5,000. Oh, no, baby. I, I don't prophesy money, cars, and all that. I have. I have. Only when God have said it. And it has happened. Same color, too. I told this girl in Colorado. She didn't need to cross the girl. You're going to get one next week. Red. Guess what? She got a red card at next week. But for the most part, God is trying to restore our souls. The body of Christ have took hits after hits after hits in the last years. People sleeping around, people getting caught, sex trafficking. What what the church ain't doing? Let's just be real. And we human, right? But we hold at a higher standard. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And my question is, when did we get so weak? When? What happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. We allowed the world to come into church and tell us don't judge. That's a lie before God. And I already proved that to y'all. And if y'all don't believe it, that's your business. Because I'm going to judge. I'm going to judge righteousness and wrong. Listen, we can't judge who go to heaven or hell. But I am to judge good and evil. Hallelujah. And that's in scripture. So I don't know what they're talking about. That was something the enemy put out there just to try to cripple the church. The church is being attacked from the inside out. I just said something. So I pray that you understand the critical times that we are in. You get restored and then go restore your brother and sister. That's how it's supposed to be done. Forgive people. Love people. Have compassion. Quit being ugly. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Quit being all about money. Hallelujah. Ooh, that's that's all God told me to tell you. He didn't change the whole, he changed the whole thing. Hallelujah to his name. So I pray that you understand it's not about followers. It's not about who has the greatest. It doesn't matter who's the least. It matters do you love God. Do you love God's people because people are hurting. And guess what? They tired. They tired. And you know they tired. As a matter of fact, you tired. I don't want, don't entertain me. If I want entertainment, I can turn on TV. And then you ain't got to turn on TV and go to Walmart. Don't play with me. I know what I'm saying. You, you just go outside these days. All kind of stuff going on. Hallelujah. This is my spirit. Show me how to stay close to God. Show me how to be kept. Show me how to survive. Show me how to thrive. Show me how to lay hands on myself and heal myself in the middle of the night. Come on, somebody. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The church and people are hurting. People are wearing masks. Oh, y'all know the masks. And you're hurting inside. Oh, don't play with me. You're lonely. You're tired. Jesus is the answer. And the Holy Spirit is the reason. And most people are not Holy Ghost filled. So I pray you understand. The pain of restoration is welling for other people. Praying for other people. Fasting for other people. While you're on this fast. And even if you have transferred over to a Daniel fast, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have your you have the list. I pray that you got a list of names that you have put in your Bible and that you praying and you laying hands on that person. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, because this is real. At the end of it all, ooh, that's good, God. Let me tell you what God just told me to tell y'all. Let's say Jesus came back tonight. I bet you a lot of things wouldn't matter to you, huh? Tell the truth. You be trying to you be trying to call people and say, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry I did this. Go, oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. If Jesus came back tonight, right now. All that stuff that you think matter wouldn't even matter. But now, that should even really put you in subjection of fear. Because the Bible says that nobody knows the time, the hour, the day. Can I tell you something? And I'm going to leave y'all with this. Every prophecy has been fulfilled except the last one. And this is the last one. Every, every, every prophecy for Jesus to come except the last one. Believe it or not, the gospel has not been preached all over the world. That's the last one. Who knows when that's going to happen? What if it happens tomorrow? What if it happens the day after? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, don't play with me now. Uh, we ain't talking about no job. We ain't talking about no, no followers. We ain't talking about no entertainment. We ain't talking about being a star. Are you ready? 
Where you gonna go? You gonna go to hell or heaven? What's up? Keep playing. Because some of you playing. Mm. I don't know about you. I love barbecue, but I ain't trying to be barbecue. Hell is real. Hell is real. I'm gonna say it again. Hell is real. Hallelujah to his name. I feel the power of God up in here. So, the pain of restoration. God wants to restore you for others. So you can go help somebody else. It's not just about us. When God saved me from everything and I was everything. Y'all, what I didn't do. I don't mind saying it. I am, I'm, very, I'm transparent on purpose. I never knew the pain I'd have to go through would be greater than the pain I went through. Woo! Hallelujah! You hear what I just said? The stuff I got to go through because of what I do for others. I cry more than I ever cry. I say, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody caught that. <sighs> so God bless you. God keep you. This is the tent day. Don't stop. Don't stop. It's almost over with. But I pray. You don't have to do what I do. But I pray that I'm an example to you. I'm going to be fasting every week because I got, I got to get back. I got to get back. I got to get back to work because I know God has some more. It's not just about, you know, having this, having that. There's more work to do, you guys. That's what it's about. It's not about heaven. You know, I'm not into all that. Thank you, Jesus. Don't get me wrong. I thank God for what he allows and what he does. But I just want to help people get to God. I want to help save people. I say help. Can't save nobody. Only, but we can lead them to Jesus who can save them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. I love you with the love of Christ. Oh, yes, Carla. It's suffering in this walk, honey. Woo! I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know, sister. I know now. This stuff is real. This stuff is real. And that's why everybody can't handle it. That's why the Bible says many are called and few is chosen. Many, so soon as they, they get that warfare or they go through something, they back up. Us... The few, the chosen, the call, we fall down, we come back for more. We be like, what? With tears in our eyes, what? <laughs> Y'all know it's true. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Rule our soldiers, for that is who we are. Let's get it. God bless you.